If you do this a lot, you will improve. You feel no rush and your ball will be so much better. Hello and welcome everybody. Today we are in Sossenheim in Terwegen. And we're going to speak about how you can read your opponent. And we're going to start right now. Pop! So who do you think will be a better adjuster? Question of this video. Is that the person that always plays outside, in the wind, maybe a bit of rain, or somebody that plays a lot of indoor? Reading the opponent is very, very important. And why is very important? Because if you are able to read your opponent well, you are probably in a better position. You will be better in decision-making. You play without any stress and you have way better movement. Don't read the ball well, you will have to run a lot on the court. You're more likely to react to a situation than know what is going to happen. You will be feeling stressed on the court and you're probably out of position. Get into that reading mindset and I can understand that it's maybe difficult because there's a lot happening on the court. But if you take a step back and relax, I'm going to teach you today how you can read your opponent. So today we're going to speak about three different kinds of anticipation like reading the opponent. The first thing is movement anticipation. So we're going to look at the movement of the player that we are playing against and to see if we can receive any knowledge from that to know what's going to happen, so to predict. The second one is ball trajectory decision making. The third one is situation anticipation. I will explain all those later on, but now we start with movement anticipation. Movement anticipation. I think you can read multiple things about your opponent, but we start with the racket of the opponent. The racket of the opponent can tell us where the ball is going. So what is the stance of somebody's racket? Is the racket open? Is the racket straight? Or is the racket closed? If you can see this, you know more or less where the ball is going to be. If they have like a close stance, like you can see here, there's no possible way that somebody plays a lob. It's very difficult. So then you can get closer to the net. If you see that the racket is very open, then you might expect a lob. So if you can zoom in on your opponent, if you can see the stance of the racket, you know more or less what's going to happen and you're able to respond early on. The face of the racket decides the angle. The position of the racket and the contact point decides where the ball is going to be. Straight, middle, or cross courts. So for instance, if you hit the ball very early in front of you, the ball is more likely to go cross. If you hit the ball very late, then the ball will always go straight. Maybe you think like, Sven, this is a lot of information. Let's make it easier. Have a look on these two swings. Have a look if you are able to see which ball is going to be fast? Yes, you're right. So you see that the ball, you can see that the player here is making a way bigger swing. And with a bigger swing, they are probably going to play fast. So I'll have a look on the bigness, if that's the word, uh, of the preparation, because you can get a lot of information about the size of the, of the swing of the opponent. So the difference in the closed and an open record is a little bit harder to see, uh, but, I think what you should do is to practice one against one, one defender, one attacker, and then ask the defender, or you are the defender, uh, to do different stance of the racket and to play low and up in a very variated way. So then you're able to learn and see very early on 
uh, what he is going to do. If you do this a lot, you will improve your vision and the, your skills in reading the opponent. So if the racket is open, the opponent is more likely to play a lot. If the ball is, if the racket is closed, then the opponent, the defender, is more likely to play the ball down. So then you can also change your position on that. So if I know my opponent has a very open stance of the racket, I step back and then my overhead will be much better because I'm already there. So those are the opponents that you play against that never move, but they are always in the correct position. There is also a very big difference in the height of the preparation. So if you have a very high preparation, they are going to play down. If you have a very low preparation, you see a lot of players when they are defending, they have a very low preparation. You know that they're going to lob and then you can adjust on that. So this is what I mean with being in the correct position. That is a big factor because if you can see what your opponent is doing and you know it, you can just walk back and you feel no rush and your ball will be so much better than if you have to run and blah, blah, blah. it's going to be way harder to do. So this is so important. Please, please practice this and focus this when you're on the court. Maybe you're never focused so much on this specific item, but it's so important. This is why as a coach, I never do so much basket drills. I will get to that in a second. So this is just the racket movements. You have way more stuff with this, endless. But now we're going to speak about the movement and the footwork of the opponent. Because you have two or you have three different kinds of footwork. You have a closed stance, an open stance and a straight stance. Those factors are easier to see than maybe the racket. So here you see the three types of footwork. Like for the closed stance, it is so difficult to play a ball cross courts. Um, this is also has something to do with the contact point. So if you see that your opponent has a closed stance, you need to able to leave the cross court part open because it's so difficult to play cross courts in this footwork uh, position. If somebody plays open or uh, straight, they can way make way more angles and you have to be careful and you cannot leave a space open on purpose. So the position, this is also the positioning, but then more left and right, not so much up and down. So this is a very big difference. I also believe if you see that your opponent is going to be lower to the ground to get the ball like low to high movement, that they might be able to lob. There is much more to say about this movement part, but it's, it's, it's too massive. And I really want to speak, uh, uh, make this video a little bit shorter. So now we're going to move to a ball trajectory. So the calculation of the ball trajectory, everything that we did before now is gonna help calculate the ball trajectory because the ball trajectory is about the fast, how fast is the ball? What is the angle of the ball? So this, does somebody play from high to low? Does somebody play from low to high? Is the ball rotating? Is your opponent playing with slice or with topspin? Makes a very big difference on where the ball is going to be. Where will the ball end? The second bounce. That's important, especially when you talk about the glass, because if you know where the ball is going to end, you can go there. That's the, that's the difference between a, a good defender and a very good defender, is that the defender is already waiting for the ball to come off the glass. Because the ball trajectory, they know more or less, okay, this ball is this fast, I can use the wall, it probably goes there, and I wait for the ball there. And then you can do everything without walking. So once again, this is such an important factor. And I will tell you soon how you can also train that. The earlier you get this information, the earlier you're able to see this. So if you're early and you see that somebody's going to play fast, you know you have to block and that you're not waiting with a very big preparation and you lose the point. The more matches, the more difference you have when you're playing, the more different type of balls you're using, the more you play with different opponents because they play different shots, the more you differentiate in this, uh, the more you learn about this specific anticipation part and reading the ball. So this is why it's completely useless to do so many drills from the basket where the coach is feeding you a perfect ball because you are not improving 
the reading of the ball, the, not the, the stance of the racket. So if you're using a ball machine, many people ask me, is a ball machine good? No, it's the worst thing you can do because if a ball machine, you don't see the angles of the, the racket, nothing. You don't see, you have an opponent, uh, opponent. You, you don't connect a specific position of the opponent that is going to play the specific shot there. So you can do way better things with that. And also the ball is perfect. So you're not improving the timing and the timing is so important. If you don't train timing, you're never going to improve because you're going to feel worse when you practice a lot with ball machines and then in a real match with real opponents and they can do whatever, big difference. So it's, a, it's a so good to do variated drills, rally drills, where there's a lot of variation, a lot of difference in slice, in spin, in balls, soft balls, hard balls. With kids, I did a lot of red, orange, green, yellow balls all together. So I had to adjust one bounce, two bounce, three bounces, and then catch. So they get very good in this specific part. What will also be a very good drill to do is to play a rally uh, with, with a friend of yours. And then every time you hit the ball correctly, you say yes. So you are very focused on hitting the ball in the perfect position, which does not, uh, does not exist, but you are very focused on reading the ball. And that's going to help you a lot in to improve the timing and to not make any mistakes. Situation anticipation. Uh, my favorite, a lot of players have patterns. A lot of players. Maybe everybody, but they're not aware of that. And they're not aware of the patterns of our opponents. And if you know somebody's pattern, you can know it so early. So you can know it before the movement anticipation and the ball trajectory. Because I know, maybe, that every time my opponent is serving from the left, they are going to play to the side wall. And I know I get it before the glass, or I know that I have to use the glass uh, to, to return and I know I can leave the middle open because they never do that So if you are good in this, you know the entire match already what's going to happen. So this is so important, but how Can you learn to read this because this is a very important aspect and this is something that you can learn in a match And I tell you how an example of, of situation anticipation is that When I play a fast volley my opponent tends to block it all the time because they know they don't want to use any glass. So I can expect what is going to happen. So in the fast situation, they play fast back. So they may be good in fast balls. Uh, another example could be when there is tension, when there is a golden point, when it's uh, a struggle, the uh, one of the attackers is going to play faster and faster and faster. So he's gonna uh, play faster because he wants to score the point. He doesn't like that, like that tension. So then you know how you can play against those players because they're more likely to make a mistake when the match is tense. So how are you able to learn situation anticipation? I suggest that you play a match and that you speak about with your partner how you got the points to analyze the match. Where did you lose the most points? Where did you win the most points? What mistakes were they made? What is the biggest weakness of your opponent? What is your biggest weakness? Which shot did you make the most mistakes from? This can be a backhand, a forehand, or this can be when I'm going to the net, or when they play fast, or um, when they play a high lob. Because then you know the pattern of the opponent. Because if you know where you make the most mistakes, you can move or, or, or change the way you play in order to not get that ball. So these this is a lot of information I think for you today. If you have any questions, please, please re uh, comment below and um, I respond to every question. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next episode. Hasta luego, ciao, adios.